Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Today I'm in Tianmu, and this is a very special place. It's a restaurant. It's called Lily Bar and Lounge. But the important thing is that I'm here to interview and to talk with Patrick Lee, who is an artist as well as the owner of this restaurant. And first of all, his arts are very unique. As you can see, the one behind me, it's uh, you know the leader of China, Mao Zedong, and this is the leader of Taiwan. Well. They are former leaders, okay? And this uh, former leader, Chiang Kai-shek. And look what he's got in his hand. And uh, well, first of all, they're, he's got his arm around him. They're great buddies and this is rare, okay? This is unusual for this to be happening. But anyway, they're sharing the beer together. So this art is called Time for a Drink. But let's go and talk to Patrick. All right, this is the Patrick I'm talking about. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Shirley. It's so good to have you here. And well, actually, I'm really glad to be here at the restaurant. And then look at your art. You are most welcome. So, sir, you know, I'm also very exciting. You know, sir, you come over here to introduce my restaurant and my artwork. Yes. So this one right behind us, it's yes. amazing. All right, it's the Chinese, well, former Chinese leader Mao Zedong. Correct. But uh, what's unusual about him is that he's wearing a pair of Converse. Well, yeah. actually, it's one big Converse <laughs> shoe. <laughs> hey, eventually, I, Converse, yeah. you know, a long time ago when I was a child, those days uh, is called, that's a sneaker with a red star named Zhong Guoqiang, Strong China. And oh. literally, is turned into converse. Of course, there must be some story behind that. We don't know. Of course, now the owner of that uh, sneaker is an American company called Converse. Right. 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 Oh, of course, there's a connection with China because mm -hmm. there's the red star mm -hmm. on the you know the emblem, mm -hmm. um, the, the trademark. Right. Oh, so, how did you think about having Mao Zedong wear converse? Well, actually, it's, it's uh, have something to do with, you know, my childhood memory because uh, those days, you know, I had a pair of uh, Converse. Oh, you actually uh, did. Eventually, those days, the pair of a sneaker named Strong China, Zhong Guo Qiang. Yeah. Therefore, Strong you know, uh, you know, just you know, uh, my childhood memory and uh, the current. Situation scenario of China, Taiwan, and so uh, let me you know uh, think about you know uh, put them together. So uh, that's have some historical and uh, contemporary meaning Me. of uh, Taiwan and China. <laughs> right. Well, it's amazing how you found a photo mm. of him. You mm. know that profile mm. in the wicker chair mm. and uh, just perfect. Eventually, it's, uh, that. Picture, you know, of Mao Zedong on, on a wicker chair is is very popular. You yeah, know, many is. artists use that, but uh, you know, say in a different way. Um, the one more like a more naughty, you know, the put <laughs> him in uh, wearing a pair of uh, oversized <laughs> sneaker, right? Uh, oh, wow, that is really cool. Uh, well, we should go on to the next one and. Okay, uh, sure, let's do it. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. talk about that one. Well, we actually saw a similar one to this at the front mm -hmm, door. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is actually another original, but yes. of the same idea. Mm -hmm. So here's again, this Mao, and then this, you know, Jiang, Jiang Kai-shek. Kai right. But uh, um, that, that's, a, that's a, you know, of Mao itself, that's also a pretty popular original right. one. Correct. And then, and then of uh, Chiang Kai-shek himself is also a pretty original mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, this hand, and this hand, it wasn't there before. So, <laughs> talk about it. Uh, you know, the hand of the god. <laughs> the hand of the, the like god's here. Uh, <laughs> the god's here. Okay. Yeah, but uh, eventually, uh, this arm is uh, the arm of uh, one of my chefs, right? Oh, he's uh, famous uh, now. Yeah. And uh, this, also his arm holding the beer bottle. Right. right. So, of course, uh, the image of uh, both of them was uh, taken from historical, you know, the photo. Then, of course, we moved that around to, you know, the, put them 
together, you know, the, make a party for them. Mm. Right. <laughs> Party, right. yes, a beer party. <laughs> right, <laughs> uh, you know, having Taiwan beer. Yeah, yeah, because uh, right. Chiang Kai Shek, like you know, the, naturally he loved Taiwan beer. Right. right, and he would introduce it to right. Mao. Right, <laughs> exactly. So actually, this whole thing was silk screen. Correct. Right, but the hand part uh, was painted. Right, you right. can. You no, know, it, eventually it's now it's also silk screen. Oh. Right, but uh, it's just transplanted from you know the, my chef's arm because right. uh, there's none of this uh, image exist, right? So, so I have to make it happen. Yeah, right. that's right. That's right. right. This is really cool. So here's Taiwan beer. Right. Share with Mao. Right. And obviously you have to ask permission for the photos, right? Yeah, I call, I did call them. You know the. You call I call them Mao Zedong. I give him a ring. You know the no answer. I call. Uh, Chiang Kai Shek, and he was three or very exciting. Then he helped me to find Mao Zedong. Then they have a consensus. Both of them agree this should, this painting should make it happen. Right. And also this uh, painting represents a scenario of a uh, uh, cross strait political relationships. relationships. <laughs> right. That's right. right. And actually, um, Chiang Kai Shek told you make sure that you have him. Holding a Taiwan beer. In yeah, that's uh, that's the only that the deal. insist of his. And Mao is said, uh, whatever, so long as uh, they can have a party and he agree to anything. All right. right. Okay. Well, there's an upstairs to your restaurant. Yeah, so that's, let's, uh, let's go head take over a look. Now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Patrick, now yes. that I've got a tour of your restaurant and all the, the drawings, the paintings, rather, I want to get to know more about you, though. I mean, you know, you've <laughs> had quite a life to start <laughs> off with. And in fact, I think most of our listeners don't know, um, don't know yet, you're actually a self-taught artist. Now, you grew up knowing that you really like art. Are your parents artistic? This is a question I always ask people. <laughs> My parents, they are farmer. Oh. They were farmer, anyhow. So, they were peasants, so okay. was, uh, everything is just, you know, the, maybe they have uh, that artistic gene, and so maybe I inherit that, right? Right, right. But anyhow, I just love to, you know, the, do drawing, painting, yeah. So I know that, I think you grew up kind of um, not very well off because you actually even like, went to school with no shoes on on your feet. <laughs> so what did you use to draw as drawing when you were small? Uh, you know, so we draw on, Anything? On, on the dirt, right? On, on the dirt? On the ah. dirt, on the ground, right? On the yeah. dirt, right? Because uh, when we were kids, you know, the, there were, you know, the yard and the, which is to uh, dry the grain, dry the rice, right? The grain, the crop. So, so we draw on that. Then literally draw on, on board, right? Go to school with charcoal, draw on the board, black board, and so draw on paper. So you were using chalk, chalk this whole time? I mean, what kind no, of no, things the, were you that's using? No, no, that's the chalk, not... not yeah, <laughs> yeah, but chalk. I mean, like at home, I mean... You I mean also no, at home, nothing. Chalk? Nothing? Nothing, nothing. nothing. You know, so when we were kids... Not even pencils? You know, so at my age, those days, in my era, you know, it's, Taiwan was so poor, right? During the... Uh, 40, 50s, that was really poor. Mm. Right. So it's not even easy to, you know, the, the, for our parents to feed our, we, you know, brothers and sisters, yeah. right? So, so the art supply, don't dream about that. And we don't, didn't even know what is art, right? Yeah, right. I know, that's true. Right. So it's amazing that you actually grew up with this interest in art. Um, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Oh, I got uh, totally eight, including total, me. Right? Yeah, eight. So it's uh, five boys, you know, not two, three boys, including me, and five, five girls. girls. Right. And while your parents were busy in the mm. field, mm. you and your brothers and sisters kind of find, in your own way, find ways to entertain yourself, right? Right. Or yes. do you, what, but you also help out in the, in the fields. Yeah, sure, we help. And we have to, you know, the help in the crop or having 
to help you know, the, remove the, the weed in the rice paddy. Right? See. Right. Or you know, the feed the duck, feed the chicken, feed the hawk. Yeah. The pig, the zoo. Yes, right. pigs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Of course. I mean. Then we go to school without sneaker. No because shoes. can cannot afford sneaker. Not until I was uh, the third grade. Finally, I have uh, one pair of sneaker that was a uh, star on that, right? Yes. Called that time, red star that time called Zhongguo Jiang. But uh, it's so precious. So we have, we tie the string and, and carry that on our shoulder, go to so school still barefooted. <laughs> and after a few months, feel, you know, that I got to wear that, then my feet grow bigger you than the shoes. So it's so painful. <laughs> You know, the, literally the shoes, you know, the, the front of the shoes, the toe come out, the back, you know, the butt, you know, my feet, you know, the touch the floor, right? Really? Very really sure. You try to squeeze your big feet into, into the, the, the unfitted canvas, oh. the unfitted Zhong Guo Xiang those days, right? <laughs> Yes, uh, you right. said it's strong, what, China Zhong strong? Zhong Guo Xiang, China, China strong, strong, strong China, <laughs> strong right. China. <laughs> what right. a name. But I gather that you were a good student because you actually managed to go and study at mm. Zhengzi University, right, right. which is one of the prestigious mm. universities mm. in Taiwan. Right. And uh, you were studying accounting. Accounting. Right. Now that's useful. But then eventually, when you after you graduated, mm. do you think you really put that into good use? Accounting. Oh, well, eventually, I never, you know, the, you know, the have a job that is accounting related but uh, you know the accounting itself does help me you know to realize uh, and to manage business in a more efficient way okay. because I um, will be more figure or you know uh, sensitive right mm. You are a very adventuresome guy because um, you know you kind of try different businesses. Mm. You're you're one who loves taking risks and trying different things. And you actually from accounting major, you got into fishery business. Yeah, you know, so before fishery, I was in fashion business. I was the manager, manage you know, and uh, one of the major. Uh, fashion importing house in New York. You know, so I was their manager. You know, so in Taiwan, managed their Taiwan office. Yes. Literally managed their office. You know, the so cross Asia from Korea all the way to Singapore to Thailand, right? But uh, after a few years, I found out oh, that's too easy. Too so easy. So I <laughs> try to find something that's something not many exciting. people. You know, the never heard of, so I get into uh, marine seafood business. Okay. Right. But so from there, of course, you know, the, it's about during the start from the Fourth and War period of time. So oh, there, those days I went ago. to, you know, the South America, to Argentina, Tina, or Chile quite often. Right. Then, anyhow, I get into seafood business. And literally, you know, the free owner, the fishing free owner, you know, came to me that uh, they have a catch in of a uh, salmon in North uh, High Sea of Northern Pacific, Pacific Ocean. Therefore, and come to me, ask me for me to help them on the marketing. There, so I did. Then, from there, I get caught, you know, the in political, you know, the confliction for you know between. USA and Asian countries, especially Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, for high sea, you know, the uh, 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 benefit of uh, between countries. Okay. So I, w I was set up by Uncle Sam. <laughs> then I spent more than five years in the States, in the pen. Yeah. I mean, in really in the pen, in the in, in a prison, prison, in a prison, right? Five years. And uh, of course, you know, one month after, you know, they set me up, and Taiwan surrender and sign, give up and sign, uh, give up, give up our high sea 
uh, sovereign sovereignty on uh -huh. Northern Pacific, mm -hmm. you know, from fish fishing to Uncle Sam, oh, right? And South Korea also one month after Taiwan, South Korea also did the same. Of course, Japan would never give up. That's they they were right. It's their right. Uh -huh. But Taiwan and South Korea, we need our Uncle Sam, <laughs> so to make us you know, sleep better during the evening. Mm -hmm. Those those days because uh, we need their protection we need their their weapon supply we need their anyhow but it's set of it's life you know different people have different life right and uh, anyhow it's just my just my life experience yes well it was unfortunate but then how, uh, how yeah was anyhow you lose you win some you, you lose some, some. You, some. you lose some you win some how you lose some years? you learn some yes right? yes agree right. <laughs> so how were those five years Oh, five those five years, you know. You uh, I had friends. to say, of course, I met some friends. They are <laughs> they are mafia, you know. They are drug lord. Oh, I'm right? sorry. Right. So uh, I pick up my <laughs> tennis skill when I was in prison those oh, days, wow, right? Good. The drug lord from a uh, Colombian drug lord called uh, let me see, uh, Andre Pulido. As now I remember his name, a good-looking guy. So gentleman, such a gentleman, when you're looking at him, you, you wouldn't know he tell he's a drug lord, right? He's the one teach me how to play tennis. Right. Really? Right. Andre Prido, now I remember. Oh, okay. I wonder how he is now. <laughs> right. All right. 